This is one of my favorite times when we can bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino to get some knowledge. Matt, there are a few things we want to discuss with you tonight. Meteors, big college football oh, forecast, yeah. even a peek ahead at Thanksgiving. Let's start with the meteor shower that's supposed to be firing up tonight. Are we going to see it? Yeah, you know, it peaks tonight and we will see at least some. But with meteor showers, sometimes you never really know until they start going how good they're going to be. Now, this is one of the meteor showers that I look forward to the most throughout the course of the year. It's a little bit different. First of all, it's November. It's not like it's August when the Perseids are going on. It's a warm summer night. Go out, hang out, take a look at the stars. If you see some, whatever. I mean, it's cold out, right? So you got to make sure you're comfortable. And we may not see all that many per hour, although even though the rate is forecast to be that 10 to 15 per hour, back in 1966, Pat, this shower produced thousands per hour. And I talked to one local astronomer who witnessed it, and he said at the peak, they were counting 40 per second. So to my point, you never really know until you get into it how good it's going to be. We are traveling through the path of an old comet that produces any meteor shower. Okay. And yes. Time out. Yes. What time do I have to get up and stagger outside to look up in the sky to see this? I am, I, I'm getting to that. Oh, geez, sorry. You know, all good, all good. I love the questions. Um, it's best after midnight towards dawn. So I know that's, that's another barrier towards seeing. But here's the reason why I like this one so much. It tends to produce meteors that have long tails and oftentimes color. So it's really, even if you only see a couple of them, it's like, whoa, that is cool. Yeah. So to answer your question, it's best after midnight until the sun comes up. And the northeast sky probably best. It emanates from the Leonid constellation, which is in the northeast sky. But really, they can happen in almost any part of the sky. I would tend to look northeast to north. Just get a wide view of the sky. And you really need to avoid well-lit areas because that will wash it out and make it more difficult. But the really bright ones you'll see anyway. And the nice thing about tonight is there's no moon interference. It's just a thin crescent. sets about 815, 830 tonight. So we're good. So if you can find a place where you're comfortable and you can stay warm, we've got the clear sky, which, as you know, is never given in the month of November. But the Leonids can really put on a show, even if you only get a couple of them. They may be very, very memorable. So that's why I like to point this one out. Yeah, Should we cool. talk Beaver football weather? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Beaver fans, big, big game. It's certainly the biggest game in the Pac-12, and, and many people think it's the biggest game in the nation this weekend, right down in Corvallis. It's going to be rainy and it is going to be windy. They've got a national network television crew down there for this, and they're going to get hammered by some good old Western Oregon winter type weather. Does that favor the Beavers? I think it does favor the Beavers because the Washington Huskies, great team, but they are a pass heavy team and passing in wind and rain is a lot more difficult. The Beavers, they like to run the ball, run the ball, and then run some ball, run the ball <laughs> some more. Yeah. So that should favor the Beavers, who are a favorite in this, in this game. Look at the winds out of the south up to 35 miles an hour. So let me go through the map with you on this one. Tailgaters, I know uh, Reeser Stadium parking lots will be filled well before the game. At noontime, gentle east winds, not bad. Maybe a little bit of light rain edging in as early as noon. But as we approach the kickoff at 430, look at this heavy rain at the coast. And suddenly by 3 o'clock, wind shift. Southwesterly and southerly winds, and they're going to get gusty, especially when the front comes through. That's the heaviest rain right around kickoff, four or five o'clock, right in that time frame. And look at these winds just pushing in from the coast. So it's going to be downright nasty at Reeser Stadium. Now, there may be a break at some point during the game. At six o'clock is roughly halftime. If this pans out, maybe a little break there, but it won't be dry for long. More heavy showers will come in and the winds will remain gusty. In fact, they could even get gustier as we get those showers and we get momentum transfer of the wind from up high down low with those showers are very effective at doing that. So the beaver weather is looking nasty and hopefully that favors the Oregon State Beavers. Yeah. Now, now they have anything against the Huskies, but you know, <laughs> Go here beats. we are in Oregon, right? <laughs> All right, and then there's Thanksgiving weather next week. It's a big, big travel week, as we've been discussing, you know, locally, regionally, by road, but people are traveling all over the country by air as well. And it's really going to be pretty good, even nationwide. There's one big storm gearing up Tuesday, Wednesday, in the middle part of the country, the Mississippi and Ohio River Valley. So Tuesday, Wednesday, from Chicago down to Atlanta, the big hubs there in the Midwest, probably impacted by this. This is Tuesday night. It's heading on off the East Coast. So if you're traveling to any of the big East Coast airports, Boston, in New York down to D.C. Wednesday early, it's going to be rainy and windy, but that pushes offshore and the snow stays bottled up pretty far north with this one. And then after that, as we go through Thanksgiving Day, we get some snow headed towards Salt Lake City in the northern Rockies and eventually into Denver by Friday and Saturday. 
But that's about it for nasty travel weather around the country. Another weak system, middle part of the country, Friday, Saturday. But that doesn't look to be quite as big as the one earlier in the week. And we should be in good shape driving wise around the northwest. A little bit of rain shower Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Otherwise, we're looking good, Pat. All right. Thank you, Matt. That's awesome. Always learn so much from that guy.